Hey everyone, Dave Belcher here and welcome to the second video in our feature week. Now I'm going to be going over the next feature um, shortly but before I start I thought I'd go over a couple of the questions that have been asked through our community forum uh, relating to the other system we released, the death system. Um, so the first question is um, will you lose karma by killing people if you're engaged in an active uh, war? And, and the answer is yes. Um, so karma isn't related to any of the factional systems, the standing systems, um, any of the wars or anything like that. Karma is simply a way to denote that your character um, is a player killer, someone who fights and kills players. Um, and this is to set you apart from the, um, the crafters and the pure, purely non-combat characters. Um, and it's really for them as opposed for the PvPers. I mean, original design had everyone taking the same stat loss. Uh, skill loss, but we decided that it really wasn't fair on the pure crafters. It's bad enough that they have PvP forced on them, um, and they have to live in a full loop PvP world. Um, so the karma system allows us to modify it so that uh, those who are hardcore PvPers get the risk um, that they're looking out for, and the crafters and the non-PvP guys they have a, a slightly easier ride. I mean, it's still tough for them. They still have the temporary loss. They still have. Um, they'd still lose all their gear and they still have to recover after their death and all that sort of stuff but it just makes things a little bit easier if you choose the peaceful lifestyle in our game. Um, the second game is, um, so the second question is where are the statues kept? Well the statues are kept in a temple of the gods. This is up in, up in the heavens and there's no way to get there in life. Uh, but when you die and you, your spirit leaves your body, either by choice or when your body's been mutilated, uh, you, you'll appear up in the Temple of the Gods and that'll be full of all sorts of statues and, and whatever cool stuff, other cool stuff we can fit in there. And it's, it's the game's only instance, um, so you'd be up there on your own, um, running around uh, until you choose to uh, go back to your new body. Um, and then the question is, and some people are asking about killing outlaws. Um, well, ultimately the outlaws they're going to be um, they're going to be probably low karma anyway. But uh, yeah, I mean, as I said before, the the karma system isn't meant to um, deter people from PvP. Um, it just it is only there to apply the additional penalty just to the hardcore PvPers um, and to give the the pure crafters and the non PvPers. Um, a bit less of a um, a risk of their death, only slightly less, but a bit less. Um, and there was a question about can you skip straight through uh, the incapacitation stage straight to, through to death? Um, as a player, no, but if you happen to be a dragon or um, some other of the titanic epic um, creatures or demigods in the game, um, they may well hit you hard enough to take you straight to the dead state. Um, so yes, that can happen. Um, if they choose then to eat you, you might find yourself destroyed as well. But uh, yeah, no, they, they, it is possible, just not as a player. Um, and the final question that I want to cover is, um, while looting and while mutilating, is your character vulnerable? And the answer is yes. So looting and mutilating bodies both take a period of time. Um, talking in the region of 15 to 20, uh, 15, 20 seconds um, and during that time your character is engaged in the action um, and they're vulnerable to attack. You can't defend incoming attacks if you're hit. Um, it's likely will add some form of disorient for a few seconds. So yeah, so you really want to make sure that you're safe or in a safe scenario with no enemies running around if you choose to loot or mutilate someone. So it's not something to do mid-combat. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to move on now. I'm going to cover off the uh, the, first, the second feature of our feature week, the Dynamic Events Team. Since very early on in the project, we've, we've known that the only real way to make a truly living, um, breathing, dynamic and evolving world with an evolving storyline is to have a dedicated team purely for that task. And that's where the Dynamic Events Team came from. Now, the Dynamic Event Team is a, um, a live team that monitors the world, um, can interact with the world, can um, modify um, quests and events, create events in the world, um, and have real-time monitoring across the entire 
of Kyrus about everything that's going on, where the player populations are, um, and and to have all those tools to allow them to kind of orchestrate the world. Um, they're very much like a traditional pen and paper dungeon master or games master. Um, it's it's their job to introduce the story and to guide the players through that story. They're recruiting people into that team based on their creativity, the quality of their writing. I mean, the majority of the people we currently have who are lined up for that team, they're old school dungeon masters and game masters from and games like Dungeons and Dragons and Warhammer. Um, and they have many, many years of experience running that sort of story um, and, and, and helping players through that story. And what's more, all the um, stories, storylines and events that are created by the, the dynamic event team, um, they're all monitored, they're all recorded, they're all audited to make sure that there's no kind of favoritism going on, there's no funny business, but also to make sure that they're all aligned in the right direction and to make sure that the, 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 the overarching story as the world progresses is, um, is all in the right direction, um, it all complements each other. And also maybe something that happened in one storyline, we can turn that into a wider event because we can have it so that um, say somebody's done something in one part of the world um, and, they've done a, and the dynamic event team have done an event around there, maybe it triggers similar events happening across the, the whole world. So the easiest way for me to um, talk about some of the things the dynamic event team will be able to do is through a sample world event. Um, and I have one here, which has been created by um, our lead writer, Mark Hope. Um, and I'm just going to run through this, and then it'll just give you a bit of an idea of, of the sorts of things that will happen. So, in our sample event, um, a meteor strikes a glacier high in the mountains of Valadonia. Its impact melts part of the glacier, revealing a city that has lain entombed in ice for countless years. Players can head into the mountains to explore the lost city and recover fabled star metal from the impact site. So that's the kind of high level mission uh, behind the, the world event. Um, so going into a bit more detail, the first thing the dynamic event team needs to do is seed the quest. So they're not just going to drop um, a random quest into the world, well, they might do for small ones, but in general for the larger um, world events, they're not just going to drop it into the world and hope players find it. First of all, they're going to seed it, and this can happen anything from a few days to even a couple of months before the event actually happens. Um, and in this quest, um, they're basically they're, they're going to um, start introducing prophecies into the world. So this will be through scrolls that are found by players, um, through old tomes, through um, ra raving lunatics, through um, priests that have had visions. Um, whatever the medium, they're going to start talking about the, the fact that there'll be something happening, there'll be some um, stars falling from heaven, um, and astrologers could warn of incoming, event, um, incoming impacts, and, and like, basically lots of different ways to start getting the community um, curious about what might soon happen, uh, and to get people excited. So after they've seeded the event, the dynamic event team, they're going to monitor the player base. They're going to try and gauge their response, see if they're discussing it on, in the game, on the forums, um, see if they're starting to um, speculate about what it might mean. And then once the, uh, once the hype behind the event gets to the right point, then they're going to trigger that event. Um, so in, in our sample world event, this is a meteor hitting a glacier. Um, we may have that actually happen as a, um, a, a something visible in the world, but aside from that, we'll have one when it happens. We'll have the people in town crying about uh, some uh, some star fell from heaven, some fireball fell from the skies and struck in the mountains to the northeast, and and things like that to give players a hint about where they need to start exploring and looking to find um, whatever has fallen from the sky. So. Imagine now that uh, the players have learned about this uh, meteor hitting in the mountains, they know roughly where it is. Um, being the sensible players, knowing that our world is, is probably one of the most harsh worlds you'll have played at in, in any MMO, they get together a nice exped expedition. So they, they get together a group of people, um, they get all their equipment together, all their supplies, and off they go into the mountains to find the, the uh, impact site of this meteor. Um, and once they do, uh, we will have people monitoring and we should see that this group is moving off. 
Um, and then the dynamic event team will have somebody monitoring the progress of the players towards the, towards the goal. Um, and as they're doing so, the dynamic event team, they can start introducing more to the quest as it goes along. So maybe um, as they're moving through the mountains, the dynamic event team may trigger um, rock falls, cave-ins. Um, they, they might um, add extra creatures coming through. So maybe there were some long lost frozen creatures in the mountains near the crash site that were thawed out by uh, the impact. Um, and, and anything like this to try and kind of make this uh, adventure the players are going on much more exciting. Um, so yeah, so they're moving on through, um, and then once yeah, so once they get into the ruined city, uh, trigger cave-ins. Maybe the players find the lost altar, altar, and uh, they interact with it, um, which causes uh, once long dead stone golems to come back to life. And and at any point, the dynamic event team they can make it a wider thing. So maybe activating that altar. Um, brings to life stone golems, but it also um, it could potentially activate other similar altars across the world, uh, which will also bring to life the stone golems in that area. So maybe there will be stone golem attacks somewhere completely unrelated to the event site, and those players may be thinking, what the hell's going on, where have these come from? So that adds other nice little side events that when the threads of that story come together later on, people will realise Oh wait a minute! I read about this um, this group that went off into the mountains to find out what happened with this falling meteor. They triggered an altar, which brought uh, to life the stone golems, and now we're getting attacked by stone golems. So it, it tries to kind of spread the um, dynamic events into the world. So yeah, um, and 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 likewise, it can have more star falls across the world. Maybe that's just the first one of many. Um, so, so that's just some of the ways the event team can um, have a, a more direct hand in the quests, um, even so far as taking control of some um, critical NPCs and maybe having dialogue with the players, um, even while they're fighting them, um, shouting taunts at the um, individual players who are involved in that uh, skirmish. So yeah, so with these, the larger quests, the world events, the smaller quests such as uh, an old lady who needs a rat clearing out of her cellar, um, anything at all, um, it, that's all comes down to the dynamic events team to keep on refreshing and, and introducing new quests and new, new clever things to do in the world. And, and ultimately to bring the game world to life. Um, but that, that's not the only thing we get from the debt team. So because they're, we, the team is uh, around the clock, we have the people monitoring all the time, they're also, their second job is to monitor the health of the world. Um, so things they're looking for um, is things like uh, where there's too much of a player population in one area, for example, it's causing issues. Maybe they'll throw um, an event which will cause the players to disperse, to um, go exploring, for example. Um, maybe if, uh, if, if, some, if the creatures in the area are getting hunted out um, and the pre-coded dynamic ecology system, system isn't able to handle what's going on. Maybe they can throw in some events which will either um, cause the players to back off or they can, at the worst case, introduce new animals to reseed an area so we don't get complete um, population wipeout. But just to do it in such a way that it feels natural. Whatever they need to do to keep the world alive, to keep it um, flowing, to keep it dynamic and, and basically just do, to create for us the living world that we're aiming to create. So that's a, that's a dynamic event team in a nutshell. Um, we've got a few more feature blogs we want to put out this week. Um, the ones we have lined up are for um, the naval system um, and I also want to say a bit about the dynamic ecology and then we'll see what else we can fit in this week. Uh, thank you for listening um, and if you're watching this on Kickstarter thank you for supporting us.